I was writing about a defrocked priest named Matthew Fox. And uh, he had a, a circle around him in the Bay Area, very interesting uh, people from many different religious backgrounds. And one of them that I was interviewing was a witch. Uh, she's kind of a famous witch. Her name is Starhawk, and she had written uh, a number of books on witchcraft. And the first witch that I'd ever met. And um, so I went over to her house, and we talked about uh, Matthew Fox. And uh, then I confided in her that I was, I was going home, and uh, the next week I had to make a speech a public speech. It was my first public speech and I was very anxious uh, because when I speak in public my voice gets high and my knees start knocking and um, it, it really put me uh, in a state of great anxiety. And she, she looked at me kind of coolly and she said, you know, well we witches have a saying where there's fear there's power. I molded over and I realized that it wasn't that I was afraid to fail. It wasn't that I was going to pee in my pants and, you know, and people were going to throw eggs at me. Um, although I could make a spectacle of myself by being scared. Um, my real anxiety was about being the kind of person that I wanted to be, which was the person who could walk into a room full of crowded people and deliver a speech and in completely engage them. And, you know, uh, uh, open myself up, be as vulnerable as I need to be and can be to an audience of people and tell them who I am and what I think. Where there's fear, there's power uh, is one of the most profound observations of psychology and philosophy that I've ever run into because it was, it was it, immediately I was able to put that observation to work in my own life and understand how I was tripping myself up and standing in the way of who I wanted to be. One time when I was working on my book, I was in Pakistan and um, very far from home and a good friend of mine died and he'd been kind of a mentor to me. His name was Marshall Frady. He was a writer that I'd known in Atlanta and he was just a wonderful free spirit and it was just hard to imagine that he was gone and also that I couldn't talk to anybody about it and I couldn't go to his service. There was nothing I could do. This hotel uh, had a pool and it was closed. It was night. Um, but I went down to the pool and uh, there were no guards around. So I got into the pool and I started swimming in the dark and I began to think, you know, where is meaning in life? Uh, you know, maybe I should go back to church or something. I should, you know, I, I just, you know, I've got to start finding meaning in life. And, uh, and this, this phrase formed itself in my mind, your job is not to find meaning, it's to create meaning. And I just stopped swimming for a moment and started thinking about um, that that's what art is all about, is trying to take life and arrange it in a way that gives it meaning. So you can then go back and look at life and understand it in a way that you didn't before. And you can't understand life. You can't, life can't, life is, is, is too big to have a meaning but you can find meaning inside it. And I think finding it and creating a structure for that is what art is all about.